Hello and welcome to Non Sequitur News. Today is a Time Machine episode for July 4th, 2024. It's Season 3, Episode 186. I am Mayor Watt and the Sentient AI is not available today. So I'm going to do all of the articles solo. Today we're going to be talking about a fake university created by ICE, 7,000 fireworks at once, Figurative cave art, PC manufacturers are violating uh, RTR rules. Um, hydrogen powered pizza oven, $10 million for a Russian hacker. California gets a new city, the most delayed video game. And 7-Eleven is going to bring Japanese food to the United States. And finally, indoor grilling. That and some jokes some sarcasm, I don't know, feel the burn. See you in a little bit. All right, folks, welcome to Non Sequitur News. Powered by hometown.com, go over, become a citizen, and you'll be able to, um, well, you'll be able to filter through your news just like this. You just kind of swipe it one way or another. I can hide it or I can save it. And you can go into each individual category and then channel. Each one of these is going to be in time, an actual live show here on Twitch and YouTube. They also get turned into a podcast. Go do a search uh, wherever you catch pod for hometown. You'll find the uh, channel and all of our shows, and there's seven of them. Uh, we do six shows and the uh, non sequitur news show every day. So the six shows on the weekend are Reality Hacker, Wanted, and Warcrafters on Saturday, and then uh, the Continuity Report, Technology Today, and Four Wheel Tech on Sunday. And each day, every day, we start out with uh, non sequitur news. That's this show. All right, folks. Let's get into the first article. Now, the first article is over in the Mobile Channel. Students at fake university created by ICE can sue the United States, according to a court. Students who enrolled in a fake university set up by the Immigration and Customs Enforcement as part of a sting operation can sue the U.S. An appeals court has ruled, seems kind of shitty, but that they would set something up that is designed to educate. Uh, the ruling by a three-judge panel of the Federal Circuit Court of Appeals reversed a lower court decision that dismissed a complaint against the U.S. by an Indian student named Ravi Teja or Teja uh, Tiagura. The University of Farmington was created by ICE in 2015 in Michigan with the aim of exposing student visa fraud. Okay, that's kind of the lowest hanging fruit that you can imagine. Why not go after the ones that are doing student visa for, oh, that's because some really powerful people. Anyway, so the uh, operation was publicly revealed when eight people were indicted for visa fraud. And according to this article over at The Hill, uh, Tara Suter from thehill.com put the article together. They were also harboring aliens for profit in 2019. According to the appeals court ruling, Ravi said that in uh, his 2021 complaint that he was unaware the apparent university was not a real school and paid thousands of dollars to enroll as a student. He alleged that he had entered into a contract with the University of Farmington for education services and that the university had breached that contract and the contract's implied covenant of good faith and fair dealing per the decision. Here's the real bummer about this is if they had done all of this, how many other people have paid into it with the intent of getting an education, maybe in good faith, right? But you can't get that time back. So not only do they lose the education and its provenance, right? The school was a fraud, um, but they were entrapped into um, this situation and they can't get their time back. And some people sit there and say, well, opportunity costs. Uh, equate to this valuation, but no, there's only so much time that we have on the planet. And I think that this is a real shame. 
that this person now has to mess around with this. So the University of Farmington, Farmington students and their legal team are ecstatic that the Court of Appeals for the federal court has ruled to allow the 600 students unjustly targeted by this fake ICE university to have their day in court. There's 600 students. Huh. The government's operation eventually came to light, but the government neither provided the paid for education nor gave Mr. Ravi his money back. The problem, though, is that it's worse than that. It's just you can't get your time back. Um, this is what I tell people. If they're thinking about a job today, tomorrow, the next day, and they're looking for a, a career, not just a McJob, not something that's just going to get them by for tomorrow, but they want to be primed and ready for the future. Don't think about today. Don't think about tomorrow. Think about five years from now, 10 years now, 15 from now, 20 from now. It's a whole different world than it was 20 years ago. Um, Let's keep going though. The next article is over in non sequitur news, real video of 7,000 fireworks going off in San Diego in 2012, a 2012 4th of July display went completely wrong. Um, this is over at Snopes, uh, which is really interesting. The article is by Noor Ibrahim, um, at Snopes.com and it has a still of a video, um, of what amounts to 7,000 fireworks going off at once. Um, and there's a little, here's a little, um, <laughs> little, not anecdote. I, I don't know. This is a, a real event that actually happened July 4th, um, 2012 display that went off the rails and is still in internet punchline a decade later, a video that went viral in 2022, but, um, I was actually there, um, in a restaurant, um, above it. <laughs> Uh, right behind these people. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. Um, we all had gone out to um, watch the fireworks display because uh, we had a reservation and they all went off at once. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. Wow. Um, so it says... Yeah, I, there's nothing really more, much more to say about this. It This actually went off here. I'm going to hit play and mute this. But they all went off at once. You could feel the heat raining down on you um, because they didn't put the timing right. And so people, it was so loud. And some people were a little bit worried. But um, yeah, nobody got hurt as far as I understood. Yep. Pretty cool. All right. That's it. We don't need to watch all of it, folks. Let's keep going. The next article is uh, over in Prime Glass. Oldest example of figurative art found in Indonesian cave. The uh, picture depicting a wild pig and a trio of human figures dates back some 51,000 years ago, according to researchers, and suggests that Europe was not the birthplace of cave art. I can't imagine anybody thinking that it is. But the article is over at... I don't know. I don't know if I'll be able to. Hmm. I didn't log in. And I think it's locked me out. You'll be able to. Uh, you'll be able to go and check it out. I I normally don't log in. I didn't check it before I started the show. Doggone it. Yeah, let me try this one more time. Yeah, it's locked me out. Um, anyway... Uh, go and check it out. We'll just skip it and we'll go on to uh, the next article. Uh, maybe I can bring it back for another episode. Um, but you won't have that problem. When you go there, you'll be able to check it out. So the next article is over in Technology Today. FTC warns some PC manufacturers that they're violating right to repair rules. The FTC is reminding several computer companies that uh, warranty void if removed stickers are illegal as is language discouraging consumers from fixing their own devices. The commission warned ASRock or ASRock, um, Gigabyte and Zotac to get rid of them and remove terms threatening to void warranties if users break the seal, it wrote in a press release spotted on or spotted by The Verge. Letters to three companies, um, pardon me one second. Letters to uh, three companies 
warn against their use of stickers containing warranty void if removed or similar language that are placed uh, in locations on products that hinder consumers' ability to perform repairs. Uh, Steve Dent over at Engadget.com put the article together, uh, but it comes from The Verge via a press release um, from FTC, actually. So it wasn't just the stickers, but language in the warranty stating that guarantees would be voided if seals were broken. The practice may be standing in the way of consumers' rights to repair uh, products that they have purchased, according to the release. Commission staff will review the company's websites after 30 days and failure to correct violations may result in law enforcement action. So it says it's not a new, they had a warning, not they, but there have been warnings before back in 2018. Yeah, I, I'm still a little leery of right to repair certain things um, I think are interesting because if something goes wrong, it takes a forensic investigation to ver verify and ferret out what the real problem was. It isn't as simple as, did you try to repair this? Um, and so I think having indicators that somebody opened up the case, um, although... <laughs> If they're all internal, there's no way to verify that the, the seals were in place beforehand. But certain places, certain things, I think I wouldn't have a problem with notices in place. Not just notices, but flags that let somebody uh, forensically investigate if somebody has tampered with something. Let's keep going. Uh, the next article is over in Four Wheel Tech. Toyota builds experimental hydrogen-powered pizza oven. Uh the uh, hydrogen grill too according to this toyota says cooking with hydrogen makes food taste better ronan glon is the author over at autoblog.com that put this together this is pretty wild this thing is looks huge and then you put your little seven inch uh, pizza in there personal pizza in interesting well i suppose it doesn't taste like propane it doesn't taste like which has chemicals added to it so that you don't huff it or something i don't know what people do with propane other than cook so grilling season has officially started and toyota well it's like halfway over um and uh, toyota believes it has the answer to the decades old charcoal versus propane debate none of the above move over other methods now you're going to be uh, using hydrogen. Oh, while I have you, type in exclamation point NSN in the chat and you'll get all of the articles that we're going to talk about. If you type in exclamation pod into the chat, you'll get all of the podcasts that represent ohmtown.com. And if you type in exclamation show notes, you'll see all of the commands necessary to pull up the show notes for each individual show. We have seven of them. One is a daily show, so a non sequitur news is the daily show. So the oven features technology derived from the Mirai, including the system used to supply and monitor hydrogen. It also uh, relies on the same type of control system that Renai puts in its furnaces. Precisely how it works hasn't been detailed, but Toyota notes that hydrogen, which has a high combustion temperature, combines with oxygen to produce steam as it burns. Visually, the stone even looks like a regular pizza oven with a dome, a chimney, and a half-shaped slot that the pizza goes into. It's on wheels, so it can be moved around as needed. Yeah, well, I've got a deck that's seven feet up. Can you bring that up there and plop it? No, probably not. This thing, it looks like it's gonna be a beast. So how much does it cost? When can I put it in wanted and buy it? There's no word on whether Toyota and Renai will uh, bring their hydrogen powered stone oven to the market or if it's going to remain as the prototype stage, much to the delight of the employees assigned to the project. As for the barbecue, the company has already started using it at motorsport events like WRC Rally Challenge, which is a program it started in 2015 to prepare young rookie drivers for rally racing. Pretty cool. All right, let's keep going though. 
The next article is over in uh, non sequitur news as well. FBI offers $10 million reward for capture of Russian hacker. We'll just jump right on over to the source of this. Newsweek.com is the source. Hugh Cameron is the author. Uh, the FBI has placed a multi-million dollar bounty on the head of a Russian hacker who allegedly targeted the Ukrainian government's cyber infrastructure to the lead up of the 2022 invasion. Amin Timovich Stigal or Stigal um, is a 20, uh, is a 22 year old hacker from Grozny in the Chechen Republic between August, 2021 and February, 2022 Stigal is alleged to have committed computer intrusions, targeting Ukrainians critical infrastructure. They write it targeting critical Ukrainian critical infrastructure. So I guess it's doubly critical. So there you go, folks. According to the court documents, Stigl, alongside Russian military intelligence sources or service, used an unnamed U.S. based company services to attack multiple Ukrainian government networks, including the Ministry of International Affairs, Treasury Department, Ministry of Energy. So the conspirators infected computers on these networks with malware known in the cybersecurity company or community as Whispergate, which the DOJ called a cyber weapon designed to completely destroy target computers and rele- related data. Sigal and his associates within the Russian government also employed the same malware to infiltrate the computers of a federal government agency in Maryland and in August 2022 hacked the transportation infrastructure of an unnamed Central European country that was supporting Ukraine. So now they've put a $10 million uh, reward and earned them a spot on the FBI's most wanted list. So according to Carr, the destructive nature of the attack without a more sophisticated ransomware motive leads them to believe that the attack was ideological in nature. In line with Carr's suggestion, Stigl also defaced the compromised government website to read uh, Ukrainians, exclamation point, all information about you has become public. Be afraid and expect the worst. This is for your past, present, and future. So radicalized, it seems. Uh, Most states use some form of subcontractors for intelligence and military operations, Carr said. Highly skilled cybersecurity personnel, not personal, but personnel, um, are very expensive and not often drawn to public sector workplaces, so outsourcing is quite normal. Yeah, well, that's because the education to create somebody that is a cyber professional is wildly expensive for some reason. Um, yeah, the U S government can assist in solving that problem, by the way, in a greater, much greater way. Anyway, the next article is over in the non sequitur news channel as well. California gets a new city mountain house, 60 miles outside of, uh, San Francisco has become the golden States 483rd city. I'm sure that this is a, a budget priced um, establishment. Um, California gets a new city. It's an article over at newsweek.com. Ellen Nichols is the author. The city has seen rapid growth in recent years, has thousands uh, as thousands have left the more expensive Bay Area Mountain House, which has been governed by an independent board of directors since 2008 when it reached a thousand registered voters recorded a population of just shy of 25,000 people in the 2020 census, welcomed its first grocery store in 2022. Sorry about that. I had to cough. Um, in March, the community voted overwhelmingly in favor of incorporating after almost 30 years as a small ex urban community as it's California first new city since Harupa, uh, Harupa Valley incorporated in 2011. Interesting. So there isn't much more to this article. You can always go and check it out though. There's a video, something about, uh, homeowners trying to sell their houses, etc. Let's keep going. A keen, I guess it's called keen is the most delayed video game in history released after 22 years. The makers of Italian action game have endured the longest development journey in history, but their game is now finally out. 
on the long discontinued Game Boy Advance. In tw uh, 2002, a group of five Italians made the local news. They were going to be the first company in the country to develop a game for Nintendo's popular portable, the Game Boy Advance. The cadre pulled together a few hundred euros and some computers to prepare for the project. They had no experience making games. They didn't even have a programmer. All they had was a love for video games, a shared hatred of working for bosses and endless optimism. So the article is over at theguardian.com. The author is Patricia Hernandez. And it says, for the next two years, the group worked away. Late nights were common, and the team barely took any time off. It was grueling. King currently holds the record for the most delayed video game in history. 22 years eclipses the 15-year journey of infamous Duke Nukem Forever, a shooter that was delayed for as long as it became a meme. After all this time, people can now actually buy King on a Game Boy Advance cartridge. Good for them. Um, won't go into all of what the game is, but you can go and read this article. Um, so the amount of capital required just put the, uh, just to print the initial copies was daunting, especially since the chances of commercial excess were low based on industry trends at the time. Despite that, they kept on working on it. Apparently spend a year diving into archives of unpublished 15th century books. There was thrilling tales about mercenary company and the Italian Renaissance involving knights. Soldiers, squires, but due to their age, their stories were essentially lost to time. So Keen is inspired by these tales <laughs> and pretty much lived them out, apparently. There's a trailer here that you can go and check out. Okay, we're going to keep moving them. We've got two more articles. This will probably be the shortest time machine episode I've ever done here. Um, and then tonight at 8 p.m., um, we should have... Um, non sequitur news as well. Okay. I might do it earlier, so be sure to follow us. Okay. The uh, next article is over in the mobile channel. 7-Eleven is bringing tasty Japanese treats to a gas station near you. And if this happens near me, I will get them. Um, and, uh, I will try them, sample them here. Um, I don't eat much anymore, but, um, I'll try some of these. I actually have, I've cleared off a table. Um, I, I've got another um, desk here in uh, the mayoral mansions studio and I can set up uh, another camera and mic and all of that um, over on another table right there and uh, give you a little uh, a top down view, I guess. Uh, maybe we'll check it out and see if we can make that possible. Slurpee spot is getting a glow up, but this is what's interesting about this is the uh, 7-Elevens that are in Japan don't have gas stations. They're essentially grocery stores and for food, right? So you go in and you get pre-made, pre-packaged stuff that's delivered on the regular, not like how they are here in the, in the States. The States typically have a 7-Eleven attached to a gas station. When they don't, it's still um, just a, a big cluster of... Um, what seems like ever increasing uh, shelf density um, and not much in the turn in, in the way of uh, broad spectrum tasty treats and food uh, it's usually candy and then there's some stuff that has been sitting there collecting dust for months uh, it, it's really interesting to see what happened but 7-eleven was acquired by a Japanese company and in Japan it's well received, but here in the States, I don't know if this is going to actually happen um, positively, but we'll see. Uh, the article again is over at gizmodo.com. Lucas Ropek is the author. Uh, they talk about Twizzler, Sherry Slurpee, Red Bull, Onigiri. Hmm, question mark. So 7 Eleven is about to get a whole new. Uh, well, they say a whole lot better, but it's basically going to be a new integration of Japanese uh, snacks into its rotation. There's no, <laughs> there is no, to me, there's no evidence that this is going to be a successful, they call apotheosis of crappy American gas station food. It is actually owned by a Japanese company. So 
you may not realize it, but yeah, that's exactly what happened. So seven and I holdings while it began as an American company, it was bought out in uh, the late 1980s that is what the article says. I don't remember it being in the eighties, but it may have been, I, I just don't recall. Now the franchise is reinventing itself by bringing more Japanese snacks into his line of U S offerings. According to the wall street journal, I actually uh, knew about this previously, then recently saw a video uh, that was talking about this. And now the wall street journal is reporting it. And, and by proxy gizmodo.com is, um, but I just don't, I just don't see it. Um, the U S population, I don't think is going to gravitate towards, um, I don't know, tofu sticks and stuff like that. Um, and, uh, m- more things like onigiri and, and, um, the diversity of flavors and food, um, they like ramen, rice balls, milk tea, the boba stuff might hit, might hit really well. Um, but I don't know about the diversity of the ramens. Um, rice balls are again, certain things, right? Uh, mochi, very, uh, yeah. Dai mochi, um, is another one where it's filled with something, not ice cream. It's not ice cream. It's like bread bean paste, white bean paste, matcha. Um, there's a a wide variety, but I just, I don't know. I really don't know because the United States population really just likes their hot dogs and whatever else deep fried this and that. Um, and it's just not like that in the Japanese, um, population, but maybe, maybe something will change. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I want to see what happens, but not everybody is, I'm sure. Um, and I'm sure that there's some wingnut out there that's going to go, I'm going to put a ban on 7-Eleven because it's blah, blah, blah. Just stay home. Anyway, the next and last article for today is in Technology Today. Grill up a storm with a 46% off the Ninja Foodie this July 4th. Now, I know this is a time machine episode. I don't know how many people will be able to take advantage of it. We don't get anything from this, but I'm more interested in what this technology is. And that is an indoor grill. Ingrid Cruz over at CNET.com put the article together. And this thing, well, that thing right there. Let me scroll up a little bit. It's an indoor grill. It's heavy duty. It filters out all the stuff that would really kind of ruin your kitchen and your house. Um, but you can do this inside. So the trouble is that it's not always the right weather to get out the barbecue. And some of us don't even have space for one anyway. Well, 4th of July sales are here to deliver a Ninja foodie, uh, smart XL pro indoor grill. And it says it's 46% off bringing the cost down to just $200. And, um, I'm probably going to put this in wanted because I love the idea of this. Um, if you don't have a large population of people coming over and then you can put, you know, right here, it looks like four burgers in it. Um, and, and cook to your heart's content inside. Um, of course you can always plug it in outside. It's not gas powered. It's electric. You don't have to worry about fumes. You don't have to worry about a propane tank. You just plug it in and cook away. Um, And even if you bring it outside and cook it, then you can unplug it and bring it inside immediately. You don't have to worry about your grill cooling off before you put it in your garage and then your garage catches on fire or something. Um, And you don't have to worry about space because it's so relatively compact compared to a grill and a propane tank and all of that. So I love the idea of this. I'm going to take a look at it. I've been saving uh, up to... uh, to go and look at this, uh, not to get it, but, um, I'll take a look at it and see, uh, if it has a, a place here in, um, the mayoral mansion. Uh, cause right now I've got a flat top, but it's outside in the elements 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And so you have to keep on seasoning it and you have to hermetically seal it. Otherwise wasps get in it, um, uh, or animals get under it or whatever. It's just, it's a nightmare. Oh, and rust. If your flat top gets any amount of uh, moisture um, and you don't uh, go back and season it periodically, um, 
you get rust developing on it. So then you have to sit there and sand this thing down um, to bring back its luster again and then continue to season it inside and out everywhere. Otherwise, it ends up getting rust on it. Um, it's a real pain in the butt. Anyway, um, while I love a flat top, I don't cook outside enough uh, to make it worth the, the uh, pain and suffering involving a flat top outside, particularly a large one. So I may swap that out for this. Anyway, so if you know anybody that wants a flat top, um, have them send an email to mayor at hometown.com. Just kidding. I, I'm not going to be mailing that thing anywhere. <laughs> I'll probably gift it to somebody and say here, it's kind of like a boat. There's two days in a boat owner's life. That is their favorite moments. The day they get a boat and the day they sell a boat. All right. Anyway, uh, I'm going to turn off the time machine and that's going to snap us back to hometown.com. You can go and check it out yourself. Um, have fun. Uh, and that'll do it for the time machine episode of non sequitur news. See you in a little bit. <laughs>